Okay, welcome. We're going to start talking about standard deviation. Uh, what I have in front of you here is a histogram, a graph. It's not a skyline. Uh, it's just basically a bar graph. And what you should notice is that it looks very symmetrical. Imagine if instead of having that bar, we could draw a curve to contain these values. That curve looks like a bell shape. Perhaps you've heard of a bell curve. This shape to define a data set is considered what we call a normal distribution. Okay, it's a normal distribution in that the most values are right in the middle where you would find your mean, that's the Greek letter me, mean, a uh, mu for mean, also known as the average. And so wherever the mean is in the middle, you get a collection of more values close to the mean, and as you get further from the mean, you get less values. Okay, but this first off, we're going to talk about this shape and this type of distribution is called a normal distribution. We're trying to learn about uh, something called standard deviation. So let me get rid of all those extra bars and just draw the curve. Okay, so in a normal distribution, we have the average, the mean, right in the middle. Standard deviation is a measure of basically spread how far apart are our data set, our values, how much have they been spread out. And there's a rule called the empirical rule, um, also known as the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. And this rule says that within a uh, normal distribution, that 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation. Now the symbol for standard deviation is the Greek letter sigma. That means one standard deviation. Okay, so whatever that value is, it would be a number on our x-axis here, if we would go over one standard deviation to the right and one standard deviation to the left, so minus standard deviation, so be plus a standard deviation, that within here we would find 68% of our values. The 95 is for 95% 95 of our data would fall within two standard deviations of the mean. So that means if we come out this same distance, whatever standard deviation is, come out here to two standard deviations past the mean, and then two to the left, so minus two, that we would capture 95% of our data. And then if we were to go out three standard deviations, so that same length again, this would be negative three standard deviations, that we're going to capture 99.7% of our values. Okay, so that is called the empirical rule, or the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. 
We saw in when we were doing some statistical calculations that we had a calculation called standard deviation, but we hadn't really talked about what it meant. So now you know that standard deviation is a value that's helping us understand how far apart our data is spread apart and um, what percent of our values would fall how far away from the mean. So this rule tells us that basically within three standard deviations in either direction, either three standard deviations bigger than the mean or three standard deviations smaller than the mean, that we'll have captured nearly all of our values. 99.7% of the values would be in there. Okay, let's turn the page. And let me show you a standard deviation and mean combination that is common, that people might be aware of. And this is for IQ. Perhaps you've heard of the IQ test. For a population, the mean IQ is supposed to be 100. That means that 50% of the population has an IQ that is basically at or greater than 100. And then the other 50% of the population has an IQ that's below 100. The standard deviation for IQ is 15. So if we come out one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations, okay? Our standard deviation is 15. We would have IQ scores of 115, 130, and 145. If we go below the mean of 100 and subtract 15, we would have 85. 70, and 55. So looking at this graph, we can see that, you know, one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below our mean would give us a, an IQ range of 85 to 115. So just a couple little summary points. We would say that 68% of the population has an IQ between 85 and 115, okay? Because our rule tells us that within this first standard deviation, so one above, one below, we would capture 68% of the data. We could answer some other questions like what percent of the population has an IQ above 130. Okay, let's try to figure that out. Well, we said that <coughs> Within two standard deviations, where I see the 130, is two standard deviations above, that, that was going to be 95% of the data. All the population is 100%. So if that's capturing 95% of the data, we're only missing 5% of the people, right? Well, those 5% of of the people, half of them will be above two standard deviations to the right. The other half of those people would be below the 70 or two standard deviations below the mean to the left. So this is a symmetrical curve, so the 5% we're missing, half is above and half is below. So we can basically say right here that we would have 2.5% of the population over here, which is above two standard deviations above the mean. And then the other 2.5% would 
would be over here. So, what percent of the population has an IQ above 130? That would be 2.5%. I hope that helps you understand standard deviation a little bit better, the normal distribution, and our 68, 95, 99.7 rule.